Welcome guys and thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. So um, just a quick introduction for those of you that don't know me. My name is Tanif and I'm lovingly known <laughs> as Mrs Menopause. Um, a little bit about my story and why I'm called Mrs Menopause. I, um, I'm currently 45 and at the age of 38 I was diagnosed for a once for a better word, with the uh, an early menopause, things hadn't been right for me for a, for a while, really. Um, moods were very much up and down, and I was getting lots of symptoms throughout my 30s, more like very bad night sweats and um, very erratic moods, very up, very down, very down, anxious, depressed, all those kind of things. And um, to be honest with you, menopause wasn't even a word I think I'd even ever said at that time. And I went to the doctor and after blood tests, you know, I remember sitting in the car and the doctor ringing me up and saying, I've got the results of your test and the test showed that you've gone through the menopause early. And I was astounded, you know, I had, I had no clue. It was a bit of a shock, but what I did then was to go away and uh, to research, really, what this meant, what what did this mean, what was happening, and what could I do to help myself. And that's how my journey started, and I started to talk about menopause. Um, at the time, I was an active fitness instructor, so I was talking to my peers, and people really wanted to know much more about the menopause. Um, and then people started to refer me as Mrs. Menopause, and I thought, well, let's just, let's just stick to that. And it's kind of grown from there, really. And um, yeah, so that's that's a little bit about me and what I've done and how I've got here. And, you know, I've been through it. I get it. <laughs> um, you know, I've 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 uh, got my war wounds from the menopause. And I my goal really is to create something that I never had access to when I was going through it. So I'm really pleased now with hearing about the menopause much more. It's in the media People are talking about it now, the conversation's starting, it's not such a taboo subject and that is fantastic. So this uh, presentation, really it's uh, aimed at uh, women uh, going through an early menopause. Uh, but the information in this presentation is very relevant for any woman going through the menopause. Um, and I'm sure you'll get lots from it. Um, the menopause is a huge topic with many different elements to it and um, really what I've had to do on this particular one which is uh, recorded for the Daisy Network, a charity that supports women going through early menopause or premature ovarian insufficiency, uh, you know I've only got a certain amount of time to deliver when I deliver this live so it's only a, a snapshot I guess of some of the topics I can cover. And I will certainly be making some more presentations about the other topics. So without any further ado, let's let's get on with it. So how to use food to feel happy, healthy and hormonally balanced. You know, can food really make that much of a difference to how you feel? And I would say a resounding yes, for sure. So, you know, I'm hoping you're going to won't be too overwhelmed with the information I'm going to show you and you're actually going to go away and think, you know, make you think about what you're eating and make you perhaps think, okay, well, I'm going to try something different. Perhaps I could try some of the suggestions and see how I feel. So what is this menopause thing? What is it? So this terminology is, you hear a lot, is perimenopause. So this is the time of the uh, of a woman's life before her, her last period so it can last this I've said here three to ten years good but it can be so much different variants in that that's kind of like an average and this is the time that you hear a lot this is the bit that gets the press this is where you, um, you hear about the mood swings and the hot flushes and the night sweats and the libido and all these things we hear so much about. This it's this during this time when the hormones are in a flux, adjusting and changing that these symptoms occur. Menopause really is the end of the periods, you know, pausing of the menses. And postmenopause is any time after your last menopause. So how do you know you've had your last period? 
um, what is recommended is that you have a whole year free of periods. And once you've had that year completely clear of any uh, menses, that's when you know you've gone through the menopause, simplistically speaking. Uh, two more things here, which is good to know. Uh, under the age of 45 is called an early or a premature menopause. And if a woman goes through the menopause below the age of 40, it's called a premature ovarian insufficiency, POI. And that's the category I fell into. So um, these are kind of terms that you hear, but I generally just talk about the menopause. It's just an easy way for me to, um, you know, use all, put, put all of these under the same umbrella. A statistic here that I found was more than one in 20 women will go through the menopause early and for me I'm not sure whether it's because of the line of work I'm in now you know my little menopause bubble um, that I hear more and more women going through it earlier and earlier or whether it is a something that is actually happening um, I haven't seen any statistics about this but I speak to women more and more often that seem to be going through it earlier and earlier. Some women go through it naturally, some women are going through it through surgery, hysterectomies, cancers, that kind of thing. And um, they can both be very different experiences. So, here we go. Here are the infamous <laughs> symptoms, some of the symptoms of menopause. No wonder it's something women dread or don't even want to talk about. I mean, if you saw that list, you'd just be like, well, I'm just going to bury my head in the sand. Now, um, it's worth getting across that not every woman has a bad experience. I have met women who have actually just had their periods stop and that's it. They are less common <laughs> than, uh, than women who have uh, experienced, you know, lots of debilitating side effects but it, it doesn't have to be this way and my take on menopause is that that when we're going and having all of these experiences and symptoms it's our body it's mother nature really talking to us and saying whoa lady come on you need to stop and you need to listen to me you need to look after me and that's what I think is going on you know menopause is the perfect time to regroup you know take stock and uh, see what's see what's going on. It's a great time to change. So, <laughs> I love this picture. I think it kind of sums up <laughs> sums up what women think about menopause, and it also <laughs> sums up when I talk to women about changing their diet. They think it's going to be miserable, but it doesn't have to be that way. Really, doesn't have to be that way. What I'm not going to share today is a, you know, a 10 step quick plan to lose two stone or anything like that. Um, those days are done. <laughs> but what I'm going to share, hopefully, is some inspiration for you and um, to encourage you to have a little bit of patience and a little bit of persistence. Because every woman is really different on the inside as they look on the outside. So we all may need a slightly different approach to managing our way through the menopause. So I'm going to keep it super simple today. These are the four areas I'm going to cover. Four areas. Uh, so I said I've condensed it, kept it really simple. So the first thing really we're going to talk about is this nutrient dense versus empty calories. And what do I mean by that? Uh, what you see in front of you is uh, a really I, in my opinion, an ideal food plate. Um, I haven't got a copy of the uh, NHS uh, Eat Well plate, but it looks much different to this. This shows you, you know, we should be eating a plentiful, a, an array of different uh, vegetables and see how many there are on that plate. You know, we can be eating a smaller amount of grains, whole grains ideally, uh, and eating you know, good protein sources. There's a little bit of oily fish there, some lean meat and some vegetable, uh, sorry, vegetable-based protein foods as well. And some really healthy fat. That would be an, an amazing plate. 
and if we could all kind of start to eat towards that ideal, you know, we would all be in a much better position. So nutrients. Um, lots of women, I, uh, in my experiences, we I get when I went through the menopause, I got terrible sugar cravings, and I was and terrible, terrible sugar cravings. I craved it so much, and I now know why that was going on because of the changes in my body. Um, but what I used to try and do was stop eating the sugar. I used to put myself on diets and try and deprive myself and put myself on strict eating regimes, which worked only for a short term. But since then, what I've discovered actually is if you put, if you're trying to crowd out the, um, um, I hate to use this terminology, bad foods, but to crowd out the foods that don't serve us so well, if we keep eating lots more vegetables and lots more whole foods, unpackaged, unprocessed whole foods, cooking for ourselves, really your body, it's a, a more intuitive, natural way for your body to eat and it will naturally reduce those cravings. You will be giving your body exactly what it needs, the vitamins, the minerals, all those nutrients it needs and, and those cravings will slowly, naturally, without you having to feel deprived, get smaller and smaller. And I've found this works so much better. So adding in all the good stuff would be my, my advice to anybody looking for change, especially if you're used to eating lots of uh, simple carbohydrates, breads, pastas, that kind of thing, potatoes, if you have a lot of caffeine, if you have a lot of sugary foods, you know, don't, I'm not going to say stop having them, eventually you'd want to reduce them. But what I am saying is add in all the good stuff, add in the good stuff because you'll start to feel better and you'll naturally want to not want to have that other stuff. So that would be my advice really on crowding out all those empty calories, you know, all the, uh, the, all the processed foods. It's quite simple. <laughs> add in stuff, don't feel deprived. So the next thing I really want to talk about is blood sugar balance. This is key to your mood, your energy, your waistline, balancing your hormones, and how you sleep. And those are the things that come up time and time again when we're going through the menopause. Why is this so important? When we go through the menopause, actually our body is in quite a high stress state anyway. Our body cannot tolerate stress. And by stress, I don't necessarily mean stressful situations, although that is part of it. I mean stress as in any additional stress we put on the body. It may be poor sleep. It might be a nutrient lacking diet. It might be too much caffeine, too much sugar. It's all creating stress. It may be not getting enough fresh air. It might be being in a bad relationship. It could be any number of things which cause more stress. And our body just doesn't have the resilience that it did when we were younger. We don't have that buffer anymore. So we balancing our blood sugar levels is key because if our blood sugar levels are dysregulated, and I'll talk a little about that in a minute, it means it's an extra stress on our body, and our body is working super hard anyway to stay in balance all the time. But if we add this sugar balance imbalance as well, it just causes another stress in the body, and it just uses up excess energy to try and stay in homeostasis. So anything we can do to dampen down our stress response is good. Now, I'm not saying all stress is bad. We need stress. It drives us. It, it gets us to do things. It's, it's, it can um, save our lives. You know, it's not all bad, but it is chronic underlying stress that's going to cause us problems. So blood sugar balance. What I've done here is on this diagram, you know, your body can only, only wants to have a certain amount of blood, not blood. It does only want a certain amount of blood, but it only wants a certain amount of sugar glucose in your blood at any one time and it works super hard to keep it in balance so as you can see on the screen here it wants to keep it 
between the two lines and it wants to keep this stable blood sugar and it will have this uh, natural undulation throughout the day as you eat the food um, as you eat your food whatever it is and you know the blood sugar levels rise and what happens is your body uses insulin to it releases insulin or secretes insulin and insulin then uh, opens the door of your cells and allows the sugar to go in the glucose to go into your cells to be used for whatever your body needs to use it for and if this is done uh, within those lines it's it's happy the body's happy it's it's it can keep it in that controlled level it it allows your body to work optimally now most people and many women go and many women I meet don't have blood sugar levels that are this stable what happens is the blood sugar levels spike and this can be done this can be because of a few reasons sometimes it's too big a meal sometimes it's uh, there's too many carbohydrates within that meal or it's the wrong type of carbohydrates it's you know simple sugars and even caffeine can do this as well and what happens is your blood sugar levels rise and they go up too high and it spikes it spikes right up and your your body then has to keep producing insulin which overworks the body to to get that excess sugar out of your blood system now what goes up must come down and sometimes that insulin works too well and it takes too much sugar out and it dive your blood sugar levels dive down again and what happens then is your body then will crave more sugar this is where the cravings come in and this can happen constantly during the day you know you wake up in the morning you have a coffee and an empty stomach up goes the blood sugar levels you go to work maybe you have a pastry sugar levels are going up they crash down again before you know it, you feel starving, hungry, you're eating more food. And what your body wants is that quick, quick fix, high energy food. So you're not going to crave a carrot. You're going to crave a muffin. You're going to crave a sugary latte or something. And if we can learn to balance our blood sugar levels, this will have an enormous effect on how you feel. It will, if you can get this balanced you'll have more energy you'll sleep better you uh, may lose weight and you'll just have it definitely increase your uh, improve your mood as well so this is a really important thing to kind of get your head around so what can you do it just goes back to my previous slide of eating like this eating like this will keep your blood sugar levels stable there are supplements you can take, but I'm not going to go into that, but there are other ways you can do it. Exercise is also key at keeping your blood sugar levels stable. Um, so this is really a really important point to take on board. So I was talking about stress earlier. And if you think of um, stress, this is, this is the impact it can have on us women. This is what it can do. This is this in my experience of working with women going through the menopause. I would look at lifestyle and a woman's stress load and a woman's body stress load, but probably before I looked at anything else, because there's no point me uh, trying to change a really stressed out woman's diet and saying, "Here you go. Here's a food plan. Go and try these new recipes." Da 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 da. It just it's just too much. I would look at lifestyle first and I found that gives me or gives the woman, my clients, the biggest return on investment if they look at the lifestyle stuff. It's not necessarily the easiest stuff to look into. We have to be committed to making some changes, but small changes can have a massive payoff, really big payoff. So anything you can do to reduce stress is really, really important especially going back to that blood sugar level, reduce that or stabilise that rather will really, really help with all these different uh, symptoms that stress can cause. So I've just written, jotted down here a few tips to help you with that. So 
some you know I said I've said eat within an hour of waking just so you can just give your body what's it what it needs to start the day yes there's a lot of things in the media about fasting and overnight fasting intermittent fasting and there is a place for that but if a woman is under stress feeling crap struggling to get out of bed you know fasting may not be the solution for her and I'm having to speak here, I'm very, I'm generalising here because obviously each woman and her needs are very, very individual. Including protein with each meal will help blunt that sharp, that sharp spike in the um, blood sugar levels. Including healthy fats in your diet is key, you know, we, we're still thinking that fat makes us fat, you know. Sure, we don't want to be eating loads of saturated fat, but eat the good fats, the olive oils, the oily fishes, the avocados, all that kind of, those healthier fats, those cold pressed oils really will make a difference. And again, it will keep your blood sugar levels stable. Put here, avoid caffeine and empty stomach. Caffeine will also, uh, it, someone explained, actually, I read something somewhere about caffeine. Caffeine doesn't give us energy, it just uh, borrows it from ourselves. So all the time we're having caffeine, it's not giving us energy, we're actually borrowing it from ourselves and at some point we have a payoff from that. It means we're going we're gonna to feel more tired because of the caffeine. So it's like we're taking it out of our energy bank. So be careful on caffeine, especially in the empty stomach because it goes straight in, straight into the bloodstream and produces that that cortisol hit and that and that can affect your blood sugar levels too don't skip meals or get too hungry and i put there hangry that's me my, my blood sugar levels are out of balance you know if i get too hungry you know don't bother talking to me <laughs> i get hangry everybody knows you know if i'm too hungry so don't skip meals you know make sure you're having good healthy meals get those vegetables in, get those nutrients in, you know, and avoid like kind of snacking throughout the day. Have a healthy snack to hand, be prepared. You know, if you work in an office, make sure you've got some nuts and a little bit of fruit or something you can eat just so you can um, stop those crashes, especially if you're new to this and you're just adjusting your blood sugar levels. I've put here swap simple carbohydrates. So uh, things like your white pasta and white rice and white bread all the beige types of foods pasties whatever cakes all of that stuff just try try swapping them to start with for healthier options maybe some whole grains try that for a change just start swapping it around start maybe making your own cakes you can add maybe make them more with almond flour so it just it's just start to swap rather than that feeling deprived you know that whole diet mentality and this is key rest most women i know i just go 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 they wake up switched on caffeine bang through the day busy 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 come the evening glass of wine needed to wind down you know and we live in this crazy busy switched on world so anything you can do to uh you know unplug disconnect you know is going to be great for you for me um getting out in nature is uh is my fix that's kind of where i go to be connect at get out there with my dog and get out and walk so whatever floats your boat give it a go just really i this oh it's just it's just worth the investment in time i know we don't think we have the time but it's it's pain into your bank, into your health and well-being bank. And I've put here exercise. Really, it does really help with your blood sugar levels. It um, it will just one, it'll make you increase endorphins, and it and also it does have a this balancing effect. Um, I'd probably recommend a mix of different exercise. You know, with either a bit of yoga and Pilates, and if you like it, you know, kind of. And maybe aerobics dance type stuff but I probably wouldn't suggest doing any massive training 
you know, regimes, nothing too long in endurance. It depends how fit you are, it depends where you are. Again, I'm generalizing, but keeping it's better, I think, to exercise for less time, half an hour, a few times a week, maybe, and then going out for walks and that kind of thing. For women going through the menopause, that's what I think would work better. Great. Okay, so I've put here some foods that actually support the menopause. There isn't any like magic foods to take, particularly, I don't think. I think it's common sense. I think we all know what a healthy diet kind of looks like. We all know what's good for us and what's bad for us. We've all f hopefully felt maybe what makes us feel good, what doesn't make us feel good, what makes us feel like we're, you know, addictive kind of eating and what makes us feel nourished. Um, but I think there are a few, there's just a few things we just perhaps need to focus a little bit more on as we go into the menopause. So phytoestrogens are found in uh, plant-based some plant-based foods, lentils, beans, chickpeas, soy, and flax seeds. Uh, soy, you want to make sure it's fermented kind of soy, miso, tempeh, that kind of stuff. And these contain phytoestrogens, which are mimic, they mimic your natural body's estrogens, but in a much smaller quantity. And, and that just helps keep our body having that estrogen effect you know these are foods that most people will be like oh god how do I cook these but there's so much information on good old google you know there's so many lovely recipes you know lentils you could start by adding that into your normal food so I don't know what you make in chili con carne for instance start by adding like a handful of lentils in just start by playing around and adding it in you know the kids won't notice chuck it in it's so good Omega-3 fatty acids are really important too. They're anti-inflammatory, uh, which is super important, especially when we're going through the menopause, which I'm going to talk about why a little bit more in a minute. You know, we need to reduce this inflammation. It's, it's the root of many diseases. So oily fish is good. Flax seeds are good. Um, all, and just, just those kind of healthy healthier oils will really help increase your fruit and vegetable intake think green green leafy veg it is the answer lots of greens lots of leafy veg not just peas and sweet corns you know let's think about broccoli cabbage all those things going in there all that green stuff uh, fruit fruit is okay you don't want to overdo the fruit perhaps you don't want too much fruit because it's quite sugary but it's better than a Mars bar right <laughs> so keep keep the fruit to you know a few portions a day maybe you could have it with a little bit of a little bit of nut or nut butter if you can eat nuts just to blunt that sugar effect but really just chuck in the fruit and vegetables choose choose as much unrefined carbohydrates as you can experiment go out there look down that whole food aisle that tiny little whole food aisle in the supermarkets beans pulses brown rice you know all those kind of things that you might think oh looks a bit weird give it a go just start playing around with them get some ideas for recipes and you really will feel the difference you'll feel when i eat more like this i feel much more grounded I feel calmer, I feel more connected, and that's all good as far as I'm concerned. You know, that's that's such a good thing, that's how I wanna feel. Uh, if you can eat organically, please try. If you look up online the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15, it will give you uh, a list of the most pesticided, I don't even know if that's a word, fruit and vegetables. And so those are the ones really you want to try and eat organically and the ones that aren't um, pesticided, <laughs> I don't even think that's a word, so much. So have a look for those online. Keep hydrated. 
we know this, we hear about this drinking water. Some people don't like water. You can add things to water. You can add lemon, you can add mint. You know, you get those little funky bottles now. You can put stuff in. Herbal teas, there is shelves full of different herbal teas. Um, and also, once you start increasing your fruit and vegetables, you're actually getting hydration from the food you eat as well. Um, and, and I've in, put in here again as well about eating the healthy fat. Don't be scared of fat. You know, make some nice dressing, make an olive oil and uh, you can make apple cider and olive oil dressing for your salads or vegetables you could use a little bit of coconut oil avocado just put it in there and you'll notice a difference it keeps everything lubricated which is important as we're going through the menopause right dry skin dry mucous membranes nose eyes vagina you know just keep everything lubricated <coughs> and it's important also to have fiber which if you're following these other suggestions excuse me, you'll be getting plenty of fibre. If you have stomach problems, IBS, that kind of stuff, just be careful going in too quickly with, with the fibre because it might make symptoms worse. But fibre is super important. It keeps you regular. Ladies, we need to be having daily bowel movements. I talk to clients and I, and I say, talk to them about their movements, about their stools, and they say, yeah, well, I go regularly. And I say, okay, so how often is regularly? And they say like two, three times a week. Well, you know, <coughs> I think daily movements is going to be better. We need to be getting rid of any excess hormones that might be building up in the body, which can cause an imbalance in our body. We need to remove in all these excess toxins. And to do that, we need to be moving daily. Um, as we go through the menopause, you know, they reduce the changes, changing levels of estrogen do affect a lot of women's uh, digestive system. It's very common for that to change. That's my experience too. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. Um, so anything you can do to keep everything moving is going to be a good thing. So the last thing I just want to talk about really on eating is um, how we eat. You know, we've got a lot of information about what we should eat, but perhaps not so much about how we eat. Again, I think it goes back to our busy lifestyles, eating on the run, eating uh, in the car, takeaways, fast food, um, and eating too fast, not chewing our food properly. And, you know, there's that disconnection, actually, from what we're eating. And have you ever had that experience when you've eaten, when you've been distracted, you've been reading something, you've been scrolling on your phone, or you've been doing something else, and you've got to the end of whatever you've eaten, and it hasn't really registered. You know, the brain is involved in how we eat and what we eat, and our society levels, you know. So it's really important as well as focus on what we eat, it's how we eat. I try now to sit quietly without any distractions and sit and chew my food really well. Your first place of digestion is in your mouth. You know, there's enzymes in your saliva that start to break down certain types of food. And that's where it starts. So I would urge you, to slow down your eating. I've always been a terribly fast eater, bolting my food down, you know, and I eat too quick and then I overeat and then I feel really stuffed and, it, you know, it just that affects my blood sugar levels and that cycle goes on. So this is an area that I really have to work on and it takes practice and it's a bit boring at first and it feels a bit weird and uncomfortable, but I, but I encourage you to uh, persist with it. Okay, so we're going to move on now to two areas that I don't think are talked about enough, generally, <laughs> with women. So osteoporosis, I'll say that word, most people think it's an old lady, whatever that is, an old woman disease. Actually, 
I know, as soon as we go through the menopause, have I got it here? If you can see, there's this little chart here, and you can see as soon as you go through the menopause, look how much your bone um, density drops. It drops quite sharply. And we know this is the same if women are going through it early. And actually, there's, there's the research to show, but if you're going through it early, it can have uh, um, more of an effect. So here, look, in the UK, one in two women and one in five men will suffer a fracture after the age of 50. That's, that's, that's a big statistic, right? That's a big statistic. And once, you know, once we get into that fractures and getting into falls and that kind of thing, you know, this actually, as we get older, increases our risk of death. You know, this is serious stuff. So all of the stuff we've talked about so far with food, you know, this is really important as it talk, we talk about your bone health as well. It's, it's really important that we keep our bones strong. So much of this needs to be done through movement, exercise, bone weight bearing exercise that you put in the weight through your big joints. So any of that you could be doing is going to be good. Anything you can keep your muscles strong um, is going to help with this, uh, this lessen your risk of osteopenia or osteoporosis. Smoking can lead to a bo lower bone density as well. So if you smoke, I don't need to go into the risks of that. And um, it's just it's just worth looking at these what it says here about just what we need to do with our bone health. We need to really increase our bone density really important as we go through the menopause you know we really want to keep our bones strong but the statistics are high and it's I don't think it's talked about enough for women going through the menopause what happens and if you think now how much longer we're living post-menopause you know if we're going through our menopause average age is in our 50s we live it we could be living 30 40 50 years post-menopause and we don't want to be at risk all that time of, of bone fractures and, and being hospitalised and that kind of thing. And that is the reality. So what can you do to um, keep your bones healthy? Calcium. Calcium, really. You know, yes, you can get it from dairy products, but it's not going to be the best place for you to get it. Get it out of your green leafy vegetables. Get, all the, get your calcium and your magnesium. They work synergistically. They work together. You know, we lots of people take lots of separate supplements, but, you know, the best way to get your uh, vitamins is from food. It's it's all in different vitamins and nutrients and minerals, and it all, it all works synergistically together. So think about other ways you can get your calcium. Green leafy veg, nuts and seeds, tinned fish with the bones, and some dairy. You know, that's fine if you need to, but just don't, don't rely on just your dairy for your calcium. Magnesium. Oh, magnesium is Mother Nature's tranquilizer. It relaxes you. Many, many people are magnesium deficient. And I urge you, you know, to make sure you get enough magnesium. See if you can get it through your food. But sometimes we need to supplement as well. And that, in my clinical experience, works super well. Women who are stressed out and... Uh, they get restless legs and cramps and and just those uh, wired kind of symptoms. Magnesium's very calming and it's great and so important for our bone health. Vitamin D3, we hear a lot of this now, don't we, On uh, about it in the press. Very important, ideally getting it from the sunshine if you're in the UK we don't get that much but you know get what you can you can get it from oily fish and eggs as well um I always before I supplement with people with d3 I would always get your d3 levels checked at your GP most GPs now are quite happy to check vitamin k don't really t don't hear that much about vitamin k but it's it's required for the mineralization of the bone um, again, green, leaf, green leafy veg. Do you sense a theme coming on here? Uh, lettuce and kale, that kind of stuff is going to get you vitamin K. Boron is something that we don't really hear 
that much about but again it's a it's a vital mineral that's going to help with your bone and you get that in look at that fruit and vegetables zinc super important uh, really good for balancing uh, good for your blood sugar level balance uh, it's good for your skin and it's also important for uh, the the protein matrix the matrix um, within the bones and you can get this from fish, whole grains, pulses, and legumes. Uh, phytoestrogens again, here they are, you know. Use those nature's natural estrogens, and we've talked about that. Fermented soy products are really good for that, as are other legumes and beans. Now, this is the only time here I've put, talked about reducing foods, <laughs> because I'm a big believer in adding in lots of foods before we take away, but bone health, reduce fizzy drinks. Um, the uh, fizzy drinks can actually, because of because they're quite acid forming, you're, and the same with dairy, your your body has to alkalize it, that acid in your body, homeostasis again, and it actually alkalize it by using calcium. It's a great alkalizer. Where does it get that calcium from? It takes it from your bones. So, you know, less fizzy drinks is going gonna, is gonna to help that. So all your Diet Cokes and that kind of stuff, reduce them if you can. Caffeine as well, reduce caffeine. It's not so good for our bones as we get older. And the other stuff, you know, good common sense there. Okay, the other thing I wanted to just cover as well was heart health. Again, something we don't really talk about. Now, this surprised me when I started doing the research into our heart health. Once women go through the menopause, their risk of dying from heart disease increases threefold. You're, and this one at the bottom, heart disease is a bigger killer than breast cancer. Heart disease is a bigger killer than breast cancer. So heart disease, we're including like angina, a heart attack, stroke, high blood pressure, that kind of thing. So you get a one in seven chance of getting heart disease compared to a one in nine chance of breast cancer. But we don't see this. Where do we see this talked about anywhere? And I think it's a really important thing to take on board. And especially for women going through the menopause early. Yes, if we're on HRT, we have a level of from bioidentical hormones, a level of protection. But not that's not everybody's choice. So women who experience an early menopause appear to have an increased risk of heart disease compared to other women their age. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. It's just, you know, the, it, it's, these are crazy statistics that I don't think enough women are aware of. Well, I'm not quite sure what's happened to this slide. But what I've said there is, you know, we need to just be including antioxidant foods, foods with uh, carotenoids as well, and lots of um, anti-inflammatory foods. So reduce anything that creates stress in the body, so caffeine, junk food, that kind of thing. You know, eating the healthy fats is anti-inflammatory. You know, this, this is the kind of stuff you want to be looking at to look after your heart health. And guess what? Anything that you have, you know, we were talked about earlier, with that lovely looking plate of food, if you eat like that, you're going to be getting all these things to look after your health. Exercise is going to help your heart health. Reducing stress is going to help your heart health doing stuff you love and enjoy, laughing, all this stuff is really important. Getting antioxidants in you is important. You know, if you've got a family history of heart disease, then perhaps you might want to go and see a professional and get some advice. Maybe there's some stuff you can be doing, work with a nutritional therapist, that kind of thing. So this is how we all want to feel, right? We want to feel great. We want to feel full of energy. And this is achievable. This is how our bodies are designed to be and feel. It's just we get stuck in a different way sometimes. Exercise is really important. 
our human bodies want to move. We're designed to move in all different ways. And unfortunately, we live in a sedentary lifestyle these days. So the more you can move, the better you're going to feel. Whatever it is, if you're, if you know, if you're, if you're only used to sitting on the couch, just get up and maybe just go out for a walk. You know, just whatever you can do, just get out. Outside is great because you're in nature. You're seeing the sun in your eyes, the daylight. It's all going to lift your mood. Um, exercise. You know, dopamine receptors love sugar, and working up a sweat encourages your dopamine production in the body so this is and this actually makes you crave healthier foods after a workout so exercising makes you want to be healthier too and we all want to feel like that now you might have noticed a common theme in this presentation today green leafy vegetables this is i actually grow this in my garden i love kale so good for you. I know not everybody loves it, but please, you know, I urge you to eat more vegetables. Half of your plate should be vegetables. Just eat it all up. It's going to make you feel amazing. You know, there's many other considerations with menopause, you know, thinking about how your liver functions, your digestion, thinking about perhaps supplementation, different, different areas you could look at. But I've just kind of gone over what I feel is really important, particularly when we get talking about going through an early menopause. And the last thing I want you to think about is self-care is the new black. Menopause really is the time to look after yourself. Your body's been able to put up with years of, I'm going to say abuse, that's probably not the right word, but you know, it's it's been very tolerant. It's been very tolerant maybe of the, the poorer diet or the too much alcohol or or not getting out enough but as we get older you know it's less tolerant and this is our time really to look after ourselves and we have to take that responsibility on ourselves and it may feel selfish um but it's not you know it's important we have to look after ourselves before we can look after our others and we have to put our self-care higher up the list it's so important because nobody else can do it for us, right? We have to be able to look after ourselves. So really, that's it. You know, nutrient load, crack on, put the good, veg good vegetables in, fruits, lean proteins, oily fish if you can, healthy fats, keep hydrated, common sense stuff, you know. Just try and, you know, think about keeping your blood sugar levels balanced. What can you do to reduce a little bit of stress in your life? You know, you don't have to do all of this at once. Do it bit by bit. My experience is that if you do one little habit, the one little step that feels doable at a time, you're likely to stick to it. If you do a big overhaul, chances are your body and your brain will rebel and it won't want to make that change. Do it bit by bit. Do it slowly, do it intuitively, do it thoughtfully. Be kind and loving to yourself. And that's it. I just want to say thank you very much for listening. I hope it's been useful. Um, you know, please do ask any questions. You can contact me at Mrs. Menopause. You can contact me by email. It's tanith at tanithlee.co.uk. And I'll see you all soon. Thanks, guys.